Welcome to part four of lecture two of aerospace propulsion. Now that we've got sort of nice expressions for the behavior of a, a nozzle, um, but so far we've been uh, making this assumption that the, the nozzle is flowing fully, which means that the flow remains supersonic in the nozzle downstream of the throat and fills the whole nozzle up to the exit. But the reality is more complex complex and here in these pictures a n is the throat area instead of a star um, and we have four possible cases so um, in, in case b c and d then the flow does fill the entire nozzle though only in case c do we have the sort of perfect uh, isentropic uh, flow in the case of an underexpanded nozzle, um, the flow becomes non-isentropic sort of outside of the nozzle. And in the case of the uh, overexpanded nozzle, um, we, we get sort of something similar. Um, and in case A, here the flow may separate um, and there will be a series of shocks, a shock boundary layer interaction, and the flow will become subsonic. And we're going to talk about these cases uh, now. Note one important thing here is that um, I've modified this equation that's in the gray box here uh, compared to what was in the MIT Open Courseware slide that I took this from. Um, there was an error in one of the equations there, or at least a, a partial omission. So I've corrected this, and this is uh, more clear that this case occurs when the uh, atmospheric pressure is between uh, sort of uh, PE and 2PE. So let's start with the simplest case, the case for ideal expansion. This is going to give us the maximum thrust for some given atmospheric pressure. Because if we extended the nozzle more, we'd expand too much and locally generate some suction or negative contribution to thrust because the pressure would be too low. And if we shorten the nozzle from the ideal uh, length or ideal exit area, well, then we wouldn't be expanding enough. And so we would lose thrust that we, that we could have gener generated. Because the flow will continue to expand, it just won't do it while pushing against the nozzle. So the expansion that's not pushing against any solid geometry doesn't help you produce thrust. So let's consider the, the fixed nozzle with varying uh, exit pressure p naught. Um, or sorry, atmospheric pressure, P-naught. Um, first, let's think about the case of under-expansion. So basically, when, when P-naught is lowered below the ideal matching value, so for example, as a rocket is climbing up through the atmosphere, at some point, the nozzle will become under-expanded. And this is what I just talked about. Basically, the exit pressure is higher than the atmospheric pressure, and the flow will continue to expand downstream of the nozzle. But in this case, the flow does fill the entire nozzle, and our existing formula for the thrust works. Next, let's consider overexpansion. Basically, this means that if, if P-naught is higher than the ideal value, then the details of what happens ends up depending on the value of P-naught over P. If P-naught over P is less than about 2 to 2.5, two then it's likely that the, the nozzle is going to remain full of flow, and again, our thrust formula is going to still be OK. If P0 over P is more than about 2 to 2.5, then what's going to happen is we're going to get a series of oblique shock waves forming in the nozzle uh, at the nozzle exit that are strong enough to separate the boundary layer. Um, hopefully, you, you, you talked about this a little bit in uh, aerodynamics and performance last in the winter. Um, and that separation point will then move into the nozzle as that uh, ratio continues to, uh, that P0 over P ratio continues to rise. And this decreases the effective flow area. And this will occur at approximately some location where the pressure is PS or pressure at the shock location, where PS over P0 is somewhere in the range of 1 over 2 to 1 over 2.5. So to deal with this case, we need to modify our thrust formula. So here's a modified thrust formula for overexpansion with separation. Basically, all we have to do is replace the exit pressure PE um, by the pressure at the shock location PS, 
and the exit area AE by the area at the shock location AS, and, if, and also the velocity uh, with the velocity at the shock location. Right, because whatever happens in the flow after this, um, it, it's, it's, there's the changes in area are no longer pushing against the walls of the, of the nozzle and therefore are not contributing to thrust. So then we get an updated expression for the thrust coefficient um, in terms of PS instead of P and AS instead of um, uh, PE and AE. So that that's, uh, covers the various cases for, for flow in, in nozzles um, with and without separation. Um, the big thing we haven't done yet is think about what actual shape the nozzle should take, you know, what that contour should look like, and that's something that we'll talk about in lecture three. So thank you 